What the hell is that? Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. So the reason why I haven't been working on guitars lately is I'm waiting for paint, okay? Now, I ordered three cans of paint that I thought would look pretty good on the Devlin guitar and kind of like looking at what's online and then getting the actual can and seeing what the paint is uh, are kind of two different things and I'll tell you the reason why. So usually anytime or a body shop now they use uh everything is done by scales now for mixing paint it's a dash of this a little bit of that and they have a camera that can actually break down whatever color is on your vehicle and they can actually come up with the custom colors in case you get like a fender bender on a custom car or scratch or chip or like that they can come up with the custom colors and break that down and know exactly what to mix and how to mix it in order to match that color now my father and i we had uh books on paint and by ppg um there was another one that we would used as well that gave you basically all the color codes for vehicle paint you know the mixing of it what paint's going to mix with this to make this color and stuff there were actual cards inside there with the paint already painted on those cards so it made it a lot easier to match up something even if it was not the same color code it was pretty much you know you can well this is going to look pretty damn close to this and no one's going to be able to see a difference on it we can get this paint in case we can't get the other paint it was kind of hard back in the day to get paint there was not a lot of places like there are now where you can go to you know AutoZone or whatever and pick up uh pre-mixed paint by your color code of your vehicle couldn't do that before it's a little bit harder so what I ended up doing is I use House of Color, like I said. I looked up online and I came up with three colors that I thought would go pretty good on the Devlin. At least looking at the computer side of things, they look like they're pretty good. So I have here, which was supposed to be a white. This was supposed to be a metal, uh, like a candy metallic red, or not candy, uh, pearl. And this was supposed to be close to a black. So as you can see, this is green. And this is more of a silver. Now, they both, all three of these have pearl inside of them, all right? Now, this would probably look good with something else. This one here is called, it comes out, it comes at night, is what this one's called. And the sample that was on the computer screen looked like the black that you see here but it's actual green. So in order to achieve this black, it's gonna be quite a few coats to, you know, depending on how light or how heavy you spray, uh, in order to achieve that color. Mm -hmm. This one here is uh, re-entry red, all right? So it has a pearl mixed inside there, but it's a little bit more on the pinkish side than what I want. This one here on the sample, which looked like little cars, okay, little bodies of the cars, it looked like it was a white. And this also has a pearl inside. This one here is called UFO, Unidentified Flying Object. And it's more of a silvery type of a color than a white. So I did some spraying some samples out, and I didn't like what I saw, didn't match what it looked like on the computer. Here's where the problem is. So when you're looking at a computer screen for paint colors, all right, and your computer screen is not calibrated correctly, you end up with troubles identifying certain colors. Things don't look properly, even with your TV sets, the same way. Now, years ago, I picked up what was called Spider 3 TV, and this thing made me a lot of money. I used to, when flat screen TV started becoming more popular and not so much affordable for people, but uh, a lot of people were buying them, replacing their old tube TVs. This here worked out really, really great as far as calibrating those TVs. Now, a lot of people turn up their backlight 
order brightness up on their TVs because of the type of room that that TV is in, depending on the lighting situation that's in that room, makes it a little bit harder to view watch TV comfortably kind of looking at you know dark is really dark and you know well, I got to turn up the brightness or the backlight in order to see what's going on TV this helped out a lot with problems with that in order to um, calibrate your TV as far as colors go sharpness contrast uh, backlight brightness and it's basically worked out really really nice for me when, like I said, when the TVs started coming out, they were flat screen TVs, uh, I posted a flyer up at our local Jewel Osco and ended up um, getting a lot of phone calls for me to come over to, I used to charge $35 to come over I bring my laptop, plug this thing into my laptop and end up calibrating people's TVs. Didn't matter how long it took me to do it, I wasn't charging by the hour, but I had a lot of people that were wanting me to do this for them. And it worked out really good. And I could still use this today and not have any problems with it as far as the TVs, the newer TVs that we have now. So depending on the brightness of the room, this thing would, like you would type in um, the make, make and model of the TV that you have. Uh, now I haven't updated this in, in years because I haven't used it in a very long time. But I ended up using it to calibrate my screens and it was a night and day difference as far as what I'm looking at as far as colors go. Along with other programs that I ended up using, this is for uh, guide to home theater systems, okay, how to set up your home theater. And then this one here is basically for high definition for TV and stuff uh, for calibrating. It also comes with little cards and stuff that are in here that help with uh, you know the test patterns that you'd see like a late late night TV and it hits that one time where all of a sudden it starts playing the Star Spangled Banner and and uh, goes into a goofy screen that looks like a, a bunch of lines and shit or different color blocks uh, or like long blocks that's what the cards are in here for is to make sure that when you have the cards in your in front of your eyes and you look at those blocks these are different color uh, lenses on this card. And what that does is you, for adjusting um, and calibrating your TV, you, to make sure those lines don't look like this. You want those lines and those colors to kind of look like this. And so nothing bleeds into each other as far as that goes. It worked out pretty good. I ended up, like I said, making a lot of money with this. But now I need to do something for my computer and ended up... Uh, like I said, looking at paint samples didn't work the way I needed it to work out. So I ended up getting a whole custom, uh, uh, what is it called, house of color, and asked them to, I went through some of their paint samples that they had after calibrating my laptop, or my computer, and I have three colors coming that are uh, pearl colors in white, red, and black. And they're all pearls. So I'm waiting for those to show up so I can complete and finish up that Devlin guitar and get it back to his, his own, the owner of it. Uh, but I have to say something with some of these colors, like this green, uh, I will use this on something. And it being a pearl, it's going to look fucking awesome. And I also picked up because I have another job that's going to be coming up pretty soon, which is a epoxy primer, which is this stuff is good for filling in like little uh, cracks, divots, you know, shit like that, that is in the original finish if you want to have a nice flat finish. There. So another thing that I wanted to show you guys too is like what I showed at the beginning of this video is something that I picked up. I picked up two of these. This one here I haven't used yet, but the other one's in in motion now on the computer. So a lot of times when you have hardware problems or software problems on your computer, it slows your computer down. Uh, you can't figure out why it's doing this. Sometimes it, it's not really a software issue. It could be a hardware issue. Like in my case, the CPU cooler was not sitting on top of the CPU the way it was supposed to due to the broken brackets for AMD. And that was what a AM4 uh, motherboard. So takes a goofy bracket for it. Plastic broke, 
Still got the metal bar here, the aluminum bar here to make the uh, new ones to replace those. But a lot of times you can look at your computer and you could download a program and stuff and have it sit on your one of your, I don't know, monitors or a single monitor or whatever if you have just one monitor. And it's it runs in the background, it doesn't take anything to run at all. And they, I mean, it doesn't take, chew up resources like you think it would have. Uh, but back in the day, these programs kind of did for monitoring your system as far as all the sensors is on your motherboard. And in some cases, especially for like CPUs, uh, it came with an extra wire that you would put by your CPU or somehow wedge it into the, uh, the fins that are on the, the coolers. And it would like take the temperature of your CPU and report it back to this the motherboard or the program or something and you're able to monitor that stuff so what I ended up doing to keep me from having any troubles again to where uh, okay my computer is slowing down what the fuck is going on and I can see that the temperature is going up and it's throttling itself back before it shuts itself off to protect the CPU I picked up these things here now these are kind of cool the one that I have on my computer right now is different from this one. This one looks like it's a lot more of a simpler setup. The one that I have, you have to pay a yearly subscription for the program in order for this thing to work. Now, you get the trial version, but it's stripped. So I picked these things off, and they're like like anywhere between like 80 bucks or 60 bucks or something. What they are, these are a five inch, five inch monitor. You can get them three and a half inch if you want. You can also get them to where they're longer, and you can mount them on the side of your uh, system case on the bottom. Now, these are meant for, you can have them as a standalone with a little stand, or you can actually mount them. It comes with, you can either go vertical or horizontal with it, and mount it somewhere inside of your system case if you have the glass. Both are USB. Some of them are USB and HDMI. Now, I don't want to use an HDMI because I'm right now I'm using the HDMIs that are coming off of my uh, video card for the two monitors. So I want something that was just going to be USB. They give you an internal and an external USB. This would be your internal just in case you plug it in. You can plug directly into the USB port on your motherboard. This you could plug directly into the USB port on the back of your computer or if you have a hub or something for it. And this one here it comes with a program as well that you have to download, but it's a lot more simpler. This one here gives you, uh, how do I explain this? The interface that you saw on the one that uh, in the beginning of the video, I had to make that interface. Okay, that's not something that you could just download and uh, put together yourself. I had to make that. And I used some of the software that came with that in order to get the numbers and shit to go with the corresponding uh, icons for each device. Now, this one here comes with all that, your themes. It comes with uh, uh, the programs. It comes with all the... It basically comes with everything that you need to get started with this one. This one's a little bit more money than the one that's on there, but I bought that one first, and that one showed up first, so I ended up installing it. So, their smart, smart screen, uh, I don't know why they ended up taking and scratching off some of the name and stuff like that on this, but when you go to the website to download the program for this one, everything is in Chinese or Japanese or whatever you want to call it. Luckily, the user manual is in both English and Chinese or Japanese. So this one here is pretty self-explanatory, really easy to understand instructions. There's nothing confusing about it. The one that's on my PC right now, that one was a little bit of a pain in the ass. So let's go over to the PC. All right, so right now you are looking at my USB display. This is the monitoring system that I ended up installing on the PC in order to pay attention to a few things that may or may not happen with the PC as far as hardware goes or possibly software where it'll end up peaking or changing uh, everything that you see right now. So if like the, something was going on, CPU would start uh, being used, you would start seeing the temperature there, that going up along with memory 
peaking if there is a problem or something like that. And also RPMs of your cooling fans to try to keep the computer from shutting down uh, when the CPU gets up to a certain temperature. Now these are five things that I think are very important. So I've got my CPU temperature and clock and I have my motherboard temperature. Next is the uh, usage of the memory, GPU, temperature, clock, and then the RPMs of the GPU as far as the cooling fans go, which right now, when there's nothing going on with the GPU on my system, uh, it does not register as far as the cooling fans go because they are not moving, only under load. And then all of the CP, all the CPU, one CPU, two, and the three, which is actually four chassis fans. I have uh, two of the fans are connected with a Y adapter. G CPU is basically the fans that are on top of the cooler, and CPU two is the pump itself. So I was able to monitor that as well and make sure that that is working now going into BIOS I have all of my fans are set up to performance exception of CPU 2 because that is the water pump so that I have set at you know, the highest setting that it can go now all the fans that are on my system have been replaced they were all the cooler masters and they were all the same type of fan the MF120 halos now what I installed in there is the Halo 2s, which is a newer version of what I already have. The old ones were only a 1800 RPM. The new one is a little over 2000 RPMs. That's the max uh, resolution per minute that they go. So I'm able to watch and see what's going on. And again, I said I have everything set to performance. So they're going to be running at uh, a better speed than what you would have it set at standard and going into the, the bio settings uh, it looked like they had basically everything set to standard so I don't know why especially for what this is supposed to be a gaming PC um, yeah so right now I can monitor my CPU and it's at 97 degrees it fluctuates here and there the clock for the CPU the motherboard is 88 degrees and this is in Fahrenheit you can also change it to Celsius my GPU which is the graphics card uh, that one is at 100 as far as temperature goes and I can see my clock and if the fans were working right now I'd be able to see those fire up so and then my CPU and chassis fans. Now the one thing that I still have to play around with on this is a little bit difficult because you have to set the parameters for it is the memory usage. So right now if I bring up task manager and go into performance and I can see the uh, the memory and how it's being used and stuff I have it pretty damn close. Uh, I still have to putz around with some of the uh, settings and the program for the monitor to get it more to get it closer now say if I click on uh, let's go with Chrome and you can see it fluctuate as far as the usage of the memory goes now that's more than what I'm seeing under task manager okay so I still have to play with those values a little bit to get it exactly right now I can close it and it'll drop back down if I open up a program, so let's see if I open up Amplitude 5, and you can kind of see that it's going to fluctuate again. Program is up and running, and you know I'm ready to you know start recording or playing around with the guitar. But like I said, the parameters that I have to set are not set correctly because if I use look at Task Manager's uh, monitoring of my memory. This graph is a lot higher than what I'm seeing on my computer, and yeah. So this is basically a simple way of monitoring, making sure everything is operating correctly and not fucking up on you. And the other one, once the once the program it goes for uh, uh, I don't know re resubscription or whatever, I'm going to end up switching over to the other monitor that I have since the program and everything else is free for it and there's more options so 
I'm going to take you over to the computer part of things and kind of show you a little bit as far as how this thing works. And this will still be monitoring uh, as I'm doing this. So let me go into uh, screen capture and you'll see that you know things are changing as far as, well actually it's not changing at all as far as fluctuating goes. So I'll remove this here. I want to open up the file or program and I'm, right now I'm just getting things moving put this over here put this over here alright so I'm gonna start recording right now one two three alright so right now you're looking at the program that I'm using and how I ended up making my display as far as uh, the display it's on the monitoring system now this is the current one that I'm using right now and you can see that it shows the temperatures shows the CPUs it's kind of like a freeze frame of what it was doing it's not running in real time now the program has to where you click on new and you can add pretty much anything that you want here that's in this list and you can have just like sensor items simple sensors uh, static labels you can create put an image which that's what I did for the background on this thing graphs and gauges now it comes with basic gauges and graphs is kind of what you're seeing on mine otherwise you have to buy them you have to buy the themes you have to buy uh, all the the the, the flashy way you want this thing to look. So I went with kind of like, because uh, I feel that, you know, I paid for this thing. I bought it. It's not like I got it for free. You know, the programming shit should come with it and all the goodies that go with it. You know, it should come together. This one does not, but the other one does. So this also has, which is kind of nice, you have a kind of like a motherboard uh now, back in the day, you know, when I was running, like, Vista and shit like that, they had, like, widgets and stuff or little side screen displays that you move your cursor to the side screen and a little thing would pop out. And you can monitor and not really change so much, but monitor a lot of stuff. And this kind of has something like that as well. And there's two different versions of it. And, yeah, but the only thing is you can't put those in the monitor, the USB uh, display device. Now, this also has, which is kind of cool, uh, you could sit there and do a Cupid or CPU, P, uh, CPU ID, sorry, I don't know why I said Cupid. Well, it's Valentine's Day, so. This gives you basically the ID of everything that you got running. You can either save it or whatever. Uh, this also has to where you can test, so you can, you know, test your cache and memory for ben uh, benchmark you can also do your uh, GPU benchmark this gives you a basically a st uh, system stable test now this will max out all of your fans this will max out your CPU or try to max out your CPU and max out your memory as far as everything that uh, is running on your PC and I've already done the test with it just to make sure everything is up and going. Then this is basically to get into the settings for the screen itself. And you're able to change things, move things around. So if I wanted to move all this around, I would highlight it in this list here and then move it here. And then I'll switch everything to where it's. So this background picture, the wallpaper, is something that I made knowing how I was going to do my layout. So this this, the graph, all the writing here and the writing here is part of the program that you're, you're looking at right now. The wallpaper with the pictures of the CPU, the box for the motherboard, memory and so on, that's something that I added to the picture here in order to make it look kind of like cool, I guess, you know, instead of just looking at a screen with lettering on it. So that's pretty much it. Um, there's really nothing more to kind of like say about this thing so let me get you over to look at what I did with the PC as far as making it flashy alright so you can kind of see how I have my LED lights set up 
and they're kind of chasing each other right now. And if you look at the fans with the colors that are passing each fan, the same color is kind of passing on each side where the LED strips are. Now, the LED strips are kind of like an aftermarket. They're not part of Cooler Masters things. So when I bring up Cooler Masters program, they don't show up as being a Cooler Master product. So what I have here is I have one set of lights going upwards, and then I have another set going down. So that gives kind of like a circling effect. Now on the inside of the system case is where it gets really bright. So let me drop this down. There you go. So as you can see here, I have the CPU cooler hose lights. I finally was able to get the gigabit to change colors that's written on the uh, GPU. That was just another program that was not installed on the pro uh, computer in order to uh, get to work correctly. So now I'm looking at getting some lines for these hoses here or connectors here to the GPU. But yeah, you can see that one's going in, one's going out of the GPU. So it looks like that there's fluid moving. And then I have trying to find a stand for the GPU that was stable enough. Now that's a Cooler Master product. It's a tempered glass with the LEDs in the bottom of it and that holds up a lot better than the other two or three that I ended up purchasing that was to you know hold up my GPU and then in the front of it I've got pretty much you know LEDs in the front same way so yeah not too flashy so now it's just time to you know straighten things out and get things organized <laughs>